Greetings. Well, the last few months have been insane. Listeners will know that I not only uprooted and relocated to a different state altogether, but I also suffered a back injury the night before we were supposed to leave. Um, as I traveled on my back, wincing with every bump in the road, uh, I realized I needed a break. I needed some self-care and I needed to take the time to allow myself to feel the somatic, to feel my mental health, and to feel my physical. Uh, but we made it. And after we settled into our beautiful new home, I found myself holding strong to my current magical praxis, but not really allowing new forms or ideas, especially ones that come up within this podcast. I mean, it is the reason why I do this. However, this was not totally unlike the spiritual burnout you'll hear from seekers near and far. You see, I needed a sabbatical within the present. One that really needed my head here and now, leaving the psychic pitter-patter of the ethereal realm and digging my proverbial toes in the dirt. Which meant I needed to remind and reconstitute my intentions with woo, with art, and for sure as fuck with living. For a while, I was a conduit of heavy ego death and supreme revelation, and it just wasn't serviceable at this time. Uh, so take this as a call to arms for all folks dipping into the ratitudes when it comes to magic and spirituality. It's okay to take a break, especially if the seek starts getting snide, weird, and estranged from the search. I began allowing other practitioners' intentions to cloud mine in some weird parapsychic hex that I finally resolved to be bogus and petulant. I needed to stumble on that myself, thus I needed a break. So I apologize for losing myself for a little bit, for taking over a month and a half off from posting, and I appreciate you being back with me. I am, for all intents and purposes, back on the hunt. I found my anchors, the wonderful things that keep this somatic reality bearable, and I'm ready to dip back into the stratosphere. Again, I think... It's important to note, fellow practitioners, new and old, it's always a humbling revelation to understand the law of correspondence. As above, so below, it's said. It's important to give self-care in the minutia as it is in the majestic. I started this podcast to be a better person and to connect. I started We the Hallowed, the art collective, uh, to be better and to connect, one ego death at a time. I've always appreciated podcasters, writers, artists to be honest about their bouts with mental health or the solid struggles with the material world. Not unlike my cathartic depression podcast with friends and fellow seekers Eric Millar and Alex Bolin, I needed to vex the hex with a friend and podcaster, Mr. Grimstake of the raucous good time cruising with steak. Initially, we had chatted about doing an addiction-specific episode. Uh, to really dig into the nitty-gritty of our rough pasts. But you know what? We need hope. And hope is abound. We needed to chat about our intentions for this quote-unquote new year, our wants and our beauties that are currently present. From Jerry Cthulhu of Nox Mente's recent dire medical scare and the magical community coming together via social media and supporting his amazing comeback, which he is back, to our brilliant relationships and magic's aid in fortifying them, to a culture's guru culture and our little bits of naysay. We get real, we get hopeful, and we find our magic, but we also criticize it. And I think that's healthy, especially within this realm. The more I know about any of this shit, and I think this is very apparent, uh, the less I know. And I'm excited to know less and less. So if you're struggling, reach out. Let us help each other find our footing. All of this will be here when you need it. It will never cease to be. And that said, weirdos, witches, here's my candid discussion. Our sloppy, fun, and drunk discussion our celebratory discussion of hope of 2020 
and the good things that come from the bad with Mr. Grimstack. Well, good. How are you, man? Dude, I'm doing, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good, man. It's, uh, it's been a weird year, but yeah, I'm definitely, yeah. definitely coming out the other end. Year. I just want to like say I listened to the Jerry comeback episode. I almost cried. Oh my God, dude. That was such an emotional episode. Like that, that, that wasn't even podcast. And that was just like, Hey, we're going to have friends on and everybody's just going to love each other. And just, it's that's beautiful. all it was. Yeah. No, I, I, I really, awesome. really appreciated it. I was like, yeah, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, t- I'm I need more compassion in my life, especially when mm-hmm. it comes to this sort of thing. So it was just so good to hear. And it's so good to hear he's doing okay. And like, that was, yeah, man. that was scary for a second there. Dude, it was real scary. I mean, it was just like one day, like he's heading up to Chicago and for Thanksgiving and like, I was going to see him and shit. And then he texts me. He's like, yeah, man, I'm uh, not feeling good. Like I'm hyperventilating. I'm going to head home. And he was in like Tennessee by then. Oh shit. And then I was like, yeah, I was like, we'll get home get to a doctor or whatever. And then next day he's like, yeah, I'm getting admitted. And then it was just, it was spiral. Oh, wow. like things just, yeah, things just got worse after that. It was just a lot of, a lot of health issues that all just hit him at once. Yeah. It's but, intense. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've man, only, just, I've only known him for a short while, you know, but it was like, I just, I felt it. I felt like the community come through. I felt, oh my God, dude. Yeah. It was, it was, just it was insane. The amount of like intention groups and just like high magic that was going on for Jerry was insane. Yeah. Like I've, I've, all the troops were activated. <laughs> it was, it, it was, was totally nuts. moving. And that like, uh-huh. yeah, I don't know. It's just like one of those, um, you know, good for the heart kind of. Yeah situation well, just, that just goes to show because because i mean when we're online and we're looking around all it is you see so much shit like shit on twitter people fighting at each other's throats at each other's throats so, like everybody's just arguing nobody's getting along and then you see a community like this like it's just nothing but helping each other good vibes just just it's it dude it's i, oh, just, yeah. I love it i love it i love the I community to, that we've built around here <laughs> like, it's, it's, yeah it's brilliant i'm like lucky to even be peripheral in it but like <laughs> I got into Twitter later, so I kind of had all my bad juju with, uh, you know, Facebook and all the other social media shit, like, right. out of the way. So I feel like I kind of came to it in an honest, like, I know mm-hmm. what this is. I can talk to friends, you know, and, like, it's helped me connect with a lot of people. So I, I feel like for the first time, I actually have a good relationship with a social media, yeah. like, yeah. enterprise. And it's yeah. totally funny enough, because all you hear yeah, well, is about... Yeah, dude. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree with you. But yeah, I mean, it took me fucking thirty-five years of my life just to uh, just to get healthy adult relationships, and they're all online. Like it's it's insane. Dude, that's <laughs> so funny, you know. Cause, so we've been wanting to talk for a while about, you know, wanted to have. I did a uh, an episode with Alec, my friend Alex Bolin and mm-hmm. Eric Miller about depression, and it was like so cathartic and good to talk to you. And I know me and you have been talking about, you know, doing one kind of based around addiction, mm-hmm. right? But like, as I were inching closer towards the new year, I started thinking like, and it sounds like what's going on in your life is beautiful. There's a lot of good shit happening. I was like, maybe we should just talk about intentions for 2020. Hell yes. And one of them for me, like the huge one is like, I got to get better with relationships. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about, you know, I'm in a great place with a interpersonal, you know, like romance relationship. But I just mean like you know just with friends like i need to need to be better at this you know Mm -hmm. like it's hard man especially like when you get older you have so much shit going on and then yeah just people making plans and make having obligations it's like i other than the guys online like i don't have any friends anymore like all my friends have just disappeared over the years they've all either moved away had kids got married just disappeared just everything just kind of fades or like or it's it comes to a point where it's like I need to get out of this type of lifestyle. So you lose that, that group of friends. Oh yeah. And that's all. That's, that's, that was a big, a big part of it for me. It's just like, I can't be around this shit anymore. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it's so it funny. Sucks. Like thinking about, you know, addiction and thinking about these things that we struggle with and how really it kind of boils down to the interpersonal relationships you have, you mm-hmm. know, with people and how healthy you are with it, or even like allowing time to just move people away. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. Like, yeah, it's it's weird. I don't know. Maybe it's like abandonment issues I had since I was a kid, but I'm always the one that kind of jumps ship first. 
I, yeah. I get that, man. I totally, I understand. Well, I mean, you just, you, you feel it out and that's, that's the thing. Like every, people change. That's the only thing that's actually constant in this world is change. Like everybody yeah. changes all the time. It just, it just happens. That's why I think marriage is the most insane thing anybody could ever do in their life. <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. Like, why would it, you ever yeah. get married? Like you, you could, you don't need that contract with somebody. You could just, you could spend the rest of your life with them and be devoted to them and don't need that crazy social anxiety and fucking yeah, weird, contract with the state. It's insane. Weird, like social capital. Yeah. No, you're yeah, right. Man. I mean, I, 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 I've known couples that are brilliant that like got married about, you know, the interest and excitement of watching somebody change, mm -hmm. you know, not just like, Oh, I've, I'm falling in love with you because of who you were or who I want you to be. But like, you're just fucking constantly surprising me. And I dig that. Yeah, you know? definitely. Well, that's, yeah, dude, that's the thing. If you could grow with somebody and change together and just, you find somebody that you vibe with, like just, yeah. you can just get, a, get, a, get along with on every level. Like it's, that's a hard thing to find. Well, speaking of which, you know, like I just saw you posted on Twitter um, about, you know, doing some sigil work and like now you're in mm. this awesome relationship Dude. and like to me that struck a chord i was like we need to talk now you yeah <laughs> like that's yeah it's, I, uh, I know how that goes like when all the intentions kind of follow through you know it's 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 just it's crazy because it's like i'm i'm living like a cliched romantic comedy right now in my life Dude, it's like too. it's fucking it's it's yeah. ridiculous but I know uh, exactly how you feel yeah, man. Like I just, I, I got out of a really uh, long-term relationship, like mm -hmm. fucking 10 years. I was with a girl and, you know, I just, I, I left and kind of spiraled, just sort of, sort of just kind of got into myself. Yeah. I didn't really, you know, just, just get a little pretty, pretty depressed. Didn't realize the depression, but you know, and that, that's when I started the podcast and things just started getting a little better and met yeah. everybody. And then, uh, and yeah, dude, just, uh, I decided that I don't want to uh, just settle for a relationship again because I find that a lot of like a lot of times that like I've gotten into relationships, it's like, okay, you know, this isn't bad. Like there's this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, but I think I could work on this. I could, I could, I could do this. Cause you know, relationships are supposed to be work, you know, you gotta, oh, yeah. you gotta do that shit. And then it's like, I'm thinking, I'm like, why should they be work? Like you should just fucking <laughs> love doing it. Like, why should you have to work for it? Yeah. So, love the uh, process. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really, I just kind of, kind of gave up on it. And then, uh, it was this, ah. it was, well, no, that, that wasn't I was yet. I didn't, say, I didn't really like give the, up on it yet. Okay. No, no, that, that came though. But, uh, yeah. but no, I was it's just kind of thinking, it was just talking to different people and like the girl, mm -hmm. like dude, any girl that I would talk to, I'd just be like within five minutes, just be cringing on the inside, just at words. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, I can't do this. So I just, uh, I read chaos protocols summer of 2018. Ah, I was going to ask you. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, fuck it, man. Like he says some shit in there. Like, you know, whether you believe in magic or not, whether what happens, like people are doing it out there. It's happening everywhere. Like, right. what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? And that's yeah. kind of just what I thought. And I'm, so I did a sigil for, uh, rather than just like a girlfriend or something fucking like that, like real vague, like just mm -hmm. very specific traits that I wanted in a partner, like very specific. And, uh, I just, I, I went through the work, fucking activated it, got rid of it, did everything. And, uh, yeah, I just, I was kind of thinking about it for a few months and this was like into the spring and, uh, I was like, yeah, whatever, you know? And then like, I just, I kind of just kept going along and that's when, uh, this girl, Lady Aboshi, she joins our chats. Mm -hmm. and she's just kind of hanging out. And dude, I connect with her so good. We're talking about anime. Like we're talking about all this shit. <laughs> but there's like kind of a catch to it. Because like a week a week earlier, I was uh, talking to this dude, K-Dog. He listens to the podcast. And he's telling me about this girl that he just got back with. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, you know, I dated her a while ago. He's like, she just hit me up out of nowhere. And I was yelling at her about backsliding. And it turns out that this was Lady, <laughs> this was Lady Aboshi. So he brought this her into the chats and dude, it's just, it's sloppy and weird, but, uh, it's hilarious, yeah, so a lot man. of time goes by. Like, I, I don't think anything of it. Cause I'm just like, she's just a listener. That's cool. She's donating a show, sending emails. It's awesome. Right. And it's all whatever. So then cryptid con happens 
and I finally like, dude, we had, I had such a great time at CryptidCon, like such a great fucking time just with everybody. And I came home and I'm just like, fuck this. Like, I don't need a relationship. Like I'm completely happy alone. Totally fine with this. Like yep. I'm, yeah. I'm good. I'm good by myself. Like I have my boys, they're fucking amazing. It's just going to be great. And uh, yeah, so like I, everything's kind of going good in my life. Like I get a raise at work, shit's going kind of good. And then out of nowhere, she just messages me on Discord and is like, what's up? Like, what's your number? What's this? You mean K-Dog broke up? Like all that. And then it's just like, <laughs> it just spiraled out of fucking, it's just spiraled since then. That's amazing. So there's like a couple of things, like you were talking about the specificity, right? Of mm-hmm. the intention, which, you know, there's, there are people that'll say, you know, you, you want to leave yourself some room. There are other people that'll say, you know, you, you, you should be specific. You should be like mm-hmm. down to the T. But my favorite part, you know, part of the whole sigilization process, right, you were mentioning is forgetting it. And mm-hmm. like the moment where you're like, I don't need this. I'm good alone. That was yeah. you really forgetting it. Yeah, I took like nine months to do it. But right. I mean, it's, it's yeah. so yeah, it, like that's I because I did, man, I felt completely at peace. Like, no, I don't. I'm not going to settle for some crappy relationship. I'm just I'm I'm good where I'm at. Like, I don't need this. Yeah, like, I don't need it. And then, yeah the absolute yeah. perfect girl just came out of nowhere like literally fucking perfect it's insane yeah. the amount of shit yeah. that we have in common it is insane well congrats man that's fucking awesome to hear thanks and it's so similar to to my story this recent relationship too i got out of a long term right. uh found like the strength and the wherewithal to be good alone and like right when that happened you know she Dude, wal- exactly. waltzes into my life yeah it's beautiful yeah it's just it's crazy are there any other like uh so you said the chaos protocols is that like kind of the the only pragmatic type of uh magic you've been using for stuff like that that's the that's the only uh magic book that i've actually read see i'm i've my whole thing in the magic world i'm i'm not practicing at all like i don't i'm I'm not a no like i just i've been insanely interested in it listen to mm-hmm. a shitload of podcasts just absorbed a lot of information i'm real shitty at studying so i don't really read a lot of stuff <laughs> but yeah it's one of those where the information's up there i grasp it i respect it and uh, you know it's it's I'm, I'm just not good at practicing things well i mean that's, <laughs> to me that's healthy though i mean uh a lot of the shit that i've been going through recently i had to take like a month and a half off just to kind of recalibrate and not you know um right kind of climb out of all of the goofy hoopla as it were exactly well you made a big um, move too didn't you yeah yeah i mean it, it all coincided so it was easy for me to take a month off or whatever but yeah at the same time you know i'll be honest i go through times where i don't it's not that i don't trust it i just don't do it i don't want to do it you know, right. I don't want to practice or I have habits like spiritual habits that I guess mm-hmm. kind of make it so that I continually do. But sometimes I'm just like, no, I I need to feel this material realm. You know, I need to feel the like pragmatic side of shit right. more like this stuff is getting in my way for a second. Yeah. You know, so I totally get that. I think that's just a healthy thing for anything. Especially right. in this occult, a culture or whatever you want to a call culture, it. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, it, it's it it gets dark and weird with guru yeah. type, you know. Ah, uh, dude, and sometimes the egos, man, the egos that's, turn that's me off. That's really it totally turns me, me yeah. off. Yeah, so yeah. that's why it's just like you know, I I'm at this point now where I'm I'm I mean, there's probably real cultists that are listening. It's just gonna call me a complete idiot, but oh. I'm just saying like like uh, you know, there's there's so many protocols, so many different ways for people to either practice or Mm -hmm. talk to this other realm, speak to it through prayer, through meditation, through just so it's in, when it all comes down to it, it's all the same thing. It's just, Mm -hmm. I think it's like, it's basically just being able to focus your intent and your will in a way that the universe is going to pick up on. And I mean, it's whether, and and those religious aspects maybe help people focus better because it's almost something to give them a point to look at. Yeah. Where, I mean, so it's just like, just, I don't know. That's, that's exactly, I mean, <laughs> just like, focus your shit. <laughs> like, yeah. There's, they're going to be occultists that hear me talk about it and be like, Oh fuck you. You know, uh, <laughs> because I mean, at times, yeah. Like I'll, I'll, 
I'll subscribe. I'll feel something. I'll feel more of like the metaphysical realm. I'll feel more about, you know, the different tundras and ideas like happening outside of, you know, just psychological tricks, you know, but the base and the base standard for me and why it makes so much sense is that they are psychological tricks, like Mm -hmm. at the very least, you know? Well, that's and the they, uh, they that's, work. that's the baseline. It's all it's yeah. all mind. It's all mind and human and you know intention. Like that's what it all boils down to. It. So it's like whether you're drawing circles and scrying runes onto something, or whether you're have your head in the sand praying to something. Or I don't. I don't know. Right. Like it's just. It feels like it's all. It's all the same. Yeah, writing a song, whatever. Yeah, just anything, man. Doing a yeah, podcast. I, Every yeah, every exactly. week, every week, Cruise of Mistakes like a hypercentral. Just put my energy into it. I never no. listen to it again. Like, Absolutely, yeah, I get that. And there. you guys do live too, right? Dude, honestly, that's been the best thing. Like, mm-hmm. it's having a schedule where every Tuesday night, you know that we're gonna be there at eight central. Like, gonna be live. Like, building that community, people show up every week. It's amazing. It is. Yeah. It's so much fun. It's completely changed the show. It's like we started just we started out just interviewing people regular you know, just interview podcasts. And it's like, you know, I like hanging out with my friends and seeing what their perspectives are and just shooting the shit and building a community. Oh man. It's, it's so refreshing. It's so refreshing to hear too. Cause you guys have such an open like palette for stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like you're listening to just people kind of, you know, bro down about their Tuesday or whatever. <laughs> it's like <laughs> no. you're, you're getting, you know, everything from cryptids and you know cryptids to QAnon to ironic yeah, racism it all exactly. happens in the same show <laughs> and it's all natural it doesn't feel yes. forced you know it's, that's what it and is, it's man. appreciative just... i think the human ear like picks up on that i think they get the casualness of it and that's why it's so fun to listen to man thanks it's I like really you're appreciate in the room that. you know yeah that's that's what we go for just a hangout because i mean i it's like cruising with steak i modeled it those are some of the best times when I was younger were just me and my buddies cruising around, just fucking smoking weed, <laughs> making songs, having laughs yeah. and shit. Like, it was the best. So it's like, it's kind of what the show is. Like, we're just all getting fucked up, just having fun for a couple hours. Yeah, I've had to, uh, you know, sincerely kind of recalibrate, I think, what my purpose or what my intentions are with this podcast or podcasting in general. I think I got... The reason why I needed the break too is I was getting too lost in kind of the, uh, how do I put this? Like, I don't know, too concerned about the optics or like metrics or, you know, dumb shit like that. And it's like, it's not for really anybody else. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be the, I would hate to be the premier occult podcast. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't want that. I want to, I'm just learning. I could, I can't afford to go back to college mm-hmm. so this is my way to like glean you know yeah the good stuff well that's the thing people. man that's that's the coolest thing when you have this nine times out of ten anybody you reach out to that you want to talk to like they got a book or something they're gonna say yes and come on oh yeah like everyone that's, wants to talk yeah so i mean even if even if what you're doing like you're doing it for yourself in the, in the end that's yeah. that's how i look at cruise of mistake like you know i'm doing it for me because i just i love it <laughs> like yeah know, so totally. who cares if anybody even listens that's what i've always said from the beginning have it's you just, ever felt fun. that? Have you ever been? Well, because you were, uh, you guys were part of the Gramerica community, right? Oh yeah, if you want to call it that. I mean, we're we're basically mm-hmm. a Gramerica spinoff. Like, okay, like we we met we met in their chat room, and that's where me and James met. So we oh, formed cool. there, and uh, yeah, I mean, they have a uh, they have like Darren pays for uh, radio network like Gramerica FM, but they, right. there's nothing on it. Like, there's there's just the same shows have been recycling on it for the past year because nobody updates anything. But yeah, we go live right. on there and they go live on there, and that's about it. I guess my question too was like, just as other being in a network of fellow podcasters, do you ever feel, or did you ever? I, you probably don't now. Like a weird uh, competition or competitiveness yeah. or no? Cool. No, no, yeah. that's just not in my nature. So, I mean, that's just, you know, let them, right. I, if, and if anybody did start succeeding, I'd congratulate the shit out of them. Like, yeah. just, that's, that's how it is. Like, no, I man, feel you. this, this podcast, this is just, this is a hobby. And I think James probably gets triggered or upset at me sometimes. Like, he's like, Hey dude, let's do like a Patreon or something. I'm like, I don't really want to do that. I was like, you know, we're just, yeah. I appreciate like, that. No, man, everything we do is free. You no guys ads. would deserve it, you know, but yeah. I, I appreciate that. Let's not bring any expectation into this 
no people. none yeah. at all this is just this is a hobby and something i do for fun i always said from the beginning the second this stops being fun and becomes like a job i'm quitting <laughs> like it's yeah. done like, nope. well i mean that's you know the reason why i asked too is like that was another thing about just taking this break was um and you know this isn't just with the occult community even though like that's kind of where i've been feeling it the most is that really weird competitive like nature with it it's it's oh, yeah. gross and it's, yeah uh, the egos there's too many egos that's yeah. why i just kind of tuned out over there like it's Fucking there's, there's great yeah there's great information like i like i like listening to a uh, glitch bottle and stuff like he's those are some oh, he's great, great. Uh, yeah like yeah, like alex does amazing shows but he's amazing, i mean other than yeah. that it's like every now and then i'll listen to rune soup but honestly i haven't even really been listening to any podcasts lately i've just been re- refining my love for music because yeah. it's just too just i love that out for too long it's like yeah, I've just I was been on a four, a four year binge of podcasts. Like I've just been to college of just a garbage college. <laughs> like, and it's like I got I just got to tune out for a little bit. It's nice. You get a podcast for a diploma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, and like uh it's funny, you know, Nish and I met in person uh going to that um well, I I busked like played music outside of the Gordon White like, Oh, that as above thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I, like, you know, I could I couldn't afford to go in. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> like, Come on, that's nuts. <laughs> like, all right, yeah, but you know, I got to meet you know Nish uh, beforehand and stuff, and that to me that was another like eye opening experience. Um, there was how a magical lot of... is Nish in person? Like, how, what, oh, how, what's that aura and yeah. energy? It had to just oh, knock you incredible. out. I mean, oh, yeah, God, I love her so much. Yeah. yeah, no, she's she's incredible. Um. I mean, that made the whole thing worthwhile. Oh, like, definitely. I, I sat on like a fucking guitar case uh, and played, you know, guitar and sang, and it was just atrocious. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sure it was great. <laughs> things were out of tune. I forgot to pick, so I was using a matchbook, you know. <laughs> but like the things that you would like lose sleep over at night going, God, I'm so embarrassed was like, no, that it made it all worth it because yeah. I got to got to hang out with people beforehand but why i brought that up was like there's i think it's that realm i don't know i'm trying to be very like trying to be coy about it because i don't want to be too judgmental you know um Uh, ah see there's where me and you are different because i'll be judgmental (laughs) shit (laughs) yeah i'm trying not to be um (laughs) you know there but yeah there was just there was just an honestly a weird vibe when it came to uh like a cult of personality Mm. you know around those yeah. folks i i know what it, you, dude it's the rune soup group the rune the rune yes. supers are they are a tight-knit community yes, I, like i was are. i was in rune soup plus for uh i signed up for for three months did a little bit of the coursework mm-hmm. and uh it was it was too much for me like they they're they're serious like and i'm yeah. not that i'm not that knowledgeable or researched like i just like learning about some weird shit man like it's um, <laughs> it's yeah it's funny like i'm part i was part of like magic.me when it like first started with jason mm-hmm. louv yeah and what that has turned into reminds me a lot of that but it's much greater I scale can imagine um and that was my thing was you had people that are so willing and dying to believe in something that works and someone yeah. telling them this shit works and yeah. they put all of their faith and money and then this person telling him that, and it was just like, I don't know, I don't feel good about this. No, no, anybody that says this works or I have the answers, I'm instantly skeptical of. You have yeah. to be because, <laughs> like, no, and I don't think anybody really knows shit on this earth. We're all just swirling around trying to figure well, it out. <laughs> that's my rub. I'm sitting here. I'm like, the more you know, grimoires I read, the more shit I practice, the more like luminaries I talk to about this shit, the less I fucking know every time <laughs> yes. like well, that's, i have that's, no it's made but, to confuse you it's built yeah, to it confuse just, you that's what it, it is it gets worse i'm like how are people making money thinking they know this shit like the more <laughs> i know about it the less i know you know just masterful grifters we can't yeah. all be jason lubes <laughs> Come i on. know right i mean mm. you know good good for him <laughs> <laughs> i'm like trying to yeah uh, i talked i talk to my buddy every day about it he's you know he's a he's an artist and a practitioner we just kind of chat just about 
like this doesn't feel good you know i don't know it's just like one of those things where you're starting to see it kind of in other people going wait a second this is a little weird you know yeah. and uh but yeah that all kind of accumulated like right when i moved to denver and i had like just decided i need to remember why i do this you know mm -hmm. what took you to denver but uh, so my girlfriend's starting like an outdoor school here. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. And then I freelance, so I'm good with oh, working so anywhere. anywhere. So, oh, Man. she was like, do you want to go? I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. Let's go. <laughs> you know? Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Man. No, it's been great. It was a little rough in the beginning. I don't know if you know this, but like I slipped a disc what? the night before we were supposed to move. I slipped a disc an hour before I was supposed to play a goodbye show in Portland. Oh, jeez. Yeah. No. Man, it was, what happened? Lifting so, couches? <laughs> no, it was yeah. It was basically like packing and moving for the week before that, and then like lifting amps and stuff for the show to oh, finally man. just. I mean, just what a comedy of errors, you know? <laughs> so fucking. I was like, you can't write this shit. It's so embarrassing. And they're like. You know, she had to text the venue and like my friends who were on tour that I set the show up with. And he's he's on his back wincing right now. He can't do anything. Oh, God. It was super humbling. And then so we had to postpone the move and we moved. I gave myself like a week and a half and I basically laid in the back of the van on the drive out here. Jeez. It's just it's been gnarly. It's been a crazy end of 2019 but i really yeah. feel like it's my back starting to feel better like oh yeah 2020 is gonna be a great falling into That's... place now you know uh-huh you're gonna but be the Jesus number one Christ. occult podcast yeah right <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's all happening me. i'm waiting for that like prag magic reddit where everyone just complains yeah oh it's gonna be this what one you had grim steak drug on. addict yeah. You, you, yeah, you, you had grim steak on, so you're you're ruined now. They're gonna say, "Why'd you oh, get this no, homophobic man. piece of shit on?" I think I heard oh, him say "gay" do once. You, <laughs> do you get that shit? I know oh, you I do the that, hate mail segment. The what, oh no, all, all of our hate mail is just real just ironic, jokes, right? loving hate mail. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. but yeah. Uh, but now the one time we were on a, a culture with uh, Ryan Peverly's show, it was one of his raw mm -hmm. episodes, and I said I I said something like. I was like, oh, that's fucking gay. Or I said something like that. And he got some long message about how he should be ashamed for having homophobes on his show and all this stuff. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, hell yeah. Oh my God, I like I'm that. hoping, I'm hoping that, I don't know. I, I really can't speak to the like outrage culture with that, but I'm, I'm hoping it's leveling out where now they understand the intention behind the use of words like that you know dude, I mean, where it's I don't know. more I ironic don't so. and funny and oh yeah. well dude that things things haven't you haven't been able to do ironic comedy since like the, for a decade now it's just been ruined but you I know mean, it's all right yeah it's all whatever you yeah can right do what whatever you, do? you want it's like it's, it's true I'm, that's why cruising with steak isn't trying to be monetized so i could do well, anything I, I want on that show <laughs> i hear a lot of people you know you know complaining about the state of comedy and all that but i'm like you can still listen to all these people there's other mediums for them to do it so yes. what they're not being picked up for an nbc sitcom like yep exactly fuck NBC. like i don't hey, yep oh yeah dude that's all just dying anyway everything's just yeah. gonna be just individual and i think youtube's on its way out too it's slowly becoming like the new nbc ab like it's becoming a new network like everything there's all these new terms of services i mean i don't use youtube for anything jerry puts our show on his uh channel but most of the time it gets yeah. taken down for copyright strikes or something because we do something there. But it's, I got uh, struck by my own fucking song. What? Like the company that the record label that put uh, the album out that I was using like for the theme music and shit <laughs> gave me a copyright strike. I was like, Jeez. I wrote the song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's just sloppy, you know? I'm, I was trying to get, I love the idea. Like I've always wanted to, get into the video casting thing and i'm trying to do it or maneuver in but yeah it just seems like youtube's like past its prime mm -hmm. on that yeah what's the one that everybody's using now like bit shoot, shoot or something or yeah yeah i just feel like that's just a breeding ground for a bunch of grapers and pepe frogs so that's yeah, all exactly. it is that's what I was <laughs> gonna say. yeah he's like i don't really want to hear about how much you guys hammers, six, six, yeah. Six, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, exactly. It's like 4chan video. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. And that stuff I just... I, that's That's the stuff that makes me pissed because all the sort of curious conspiracy stuff is like kind of lumped into so, you know it yeah. gets thrown in there like you, you just you get you get called a racist or just anything like alt-right you can't even you say anything that, anymore it's nuts i think it's because they lump in a lot of the like political conspiratorial things to the quote-unquote jewish question i oh, think that's all, all of it yeah i think that's why which is you know it's racist yeah well, I mean, because <laughs> you're, you're but, talking about a race who's bad. But, but I mean, but let's be serious now. <laughs> who's really running Hollywood? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but speed. you know, I mean, like I, I talk about this a lot because the occult community um, also has a huge overlap of uh-huh. kind of alt right. Well, you I know. started in the conspiracy UFO world and I found myself in the occult world. Like there's, there's right, all this, yeah. it's all connected because when you start looking at the weird and the other, everything starts to look the same. Like it's just, yeah. it's, it's all the same because like when you, when you dive into UFOs enough, you start learning about the story of like Aleister Crowley summoning lamb and lamb looks like a gray or sure. something. And then you're mm-hmm. like, what's this all about? And then you start learning about Crowley and then you go deeper and then you're just fucking Jack doing magic and, and shit. Yeah. Jack, yeah. Yeah, you just, it's it's a NASA. It's on the, It's weird. I've seen so many people go down the same path like that. Just like start, I think, it, yeah. Like there's some design. There's there's some sort of template that people just get attached to and then follow it. I blame it on YouTube right. and smartphones. YouTube University. That's that's yeah. what's uh, <laughs> fucked so exactly. many people up. Oh my god, yeah. But it reminds me. It's like yeah, with the the credentials too of a conspiracy conspiracy theorist here. You know, it's a lot like the occult. Like, there is no fucking diploma no, for this. No, you know no. what I mean? You, like, it's you, just who can be an armchair researcher, though, the exactly, hardest. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But my thing is, like, with a lot, uh, with anything, is, like, the blanket people that are, like, you know, I believe in, you know, the moon landing was fake, but I believe in aliens and I believe in ghosts and also vampires. You know what I mean? Just, like, it's, like, yep. anything that's that's out in the, in the preternatural like supernatural it's like fair game and i'm like you gotta pick and choose <laughs> you have to you have to well you can't you like be open-minded but don't fucking let right. your brain fall out like pay attention to the shit <laughs> well it's, yeah it's like and i hate to keep bringing it up but you know like in the occult community it's like i hear all this shit like oh i'm an astrologer and in, into it and fucking you know <laughs> like I also, you know, I'm in the OTO, but also it's just like, Jesus, man, pick a club. <laughs> well, that's, that's the biggest thing. I don't thing mean too, that. I don't... People, well, no, but people, they want to find their, they want to find their path. Like that's yeah. what people strive for. They want, they want to have some sort of identity to latch on to. And, you know, I mean, well, I chose everyone's an astrologer a and a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everyone's an astrologer and a tarot reader now. Oh, everybody. Yeah, Definitely, man. Yeah. You go on Twitter right now and find a million people who will read your fucking tarot or just mm-hmm. to give you your chart. It's everywhere. Which I, I, I definitely appreciate to a degree. Once again, I'm yeah. like trying not to sound bitter about it, but I think that's just kind of where I am with this stuff. Is I'm having to be more discerning about the mm-hmm. people that I give like credence to. And there's something about, you know, the passionate, quiet ones in a way. Right. You know? Uh, N- Nish but, is yeah. my go-to. If I have any question oh, about she, anything, yeah, I just great. immediately yeah. go to Nish. She's, she's the most magical witch I know. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, she was talking about, I don't want to blow it up. If, well, she was talking about doing some sort of podcast or something. So I was like, oh, yeah. Be Do amazing. It. Yeah. Hell yeah. I didn't announce that or anything. That's not. (laughs) (laughs) There's no announcements. Well, because I I actually asked her. I was like, well, I'm going to talk with Grim. Um, You should uh, you should pop in if you if you have if you're available. And she said that we were her favorites and that she was too busy doing something. Yeah. And she's busy. She's a busy lady. Yeah. Yeah. All good hedge witches are. Yes, they are. <laughs> Definitely. Man. So what's uh, Man. 
what is 2020 looking like for you? 2020. You got, it seems like um, like you and like me, shit picked up at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shit really picked up uh, beginning of November, like end of October. And if everything goes to plan, by the end of 2020, I should be in Philadelphia. And uh, that's pretty much my only goal right now. Is just is that to where make she it is? To, yeah. Yeah. And because uh, I have nothing really going on here. I mean, I just work every day. Like I've, I could just up and go. I'm in a very liminal state right now. Or I could yeah. just, uh, I could just up and phew, be gone. So I'm just gonna get some I, shit taken care of here and figure things out. And that's my intention. We'll see what happens. I mean, this could yeah, all just also blow up in a big ball of fire for me. I mean, right. I, I have, I don't have that feeling at all. But it's also there. Like I'm aware of it. But I have a great community around me that'll lift me up if I get destroyed. <laughs> like well, it's, also, yeah, it's healthy to be pleasantly Dude, I gotta take surprised. This chance. You know? I gotta take yes. this chance because it's like. I would rather everything just go up in flames and be terrible and, you know, at least give it a try than to live my life with regret and not give this a shot. Amen. So that's kind of, yeah. that's kind of where I'm at right now where it's just like, fuck so, it, take a chance, do it. You said that there's nothing really in Indiana. What, what brought you out there to begin with? Oh, I've just, where, just where I, I was, I, yeah. Yeah, where I grew up. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, Indiana, Philadelphia is going to be pretty exciting. Oh, dude, I can't I wait. Yeah. Fuck it, but man. yeah, I'm with Risks you. And at chances, the end of, let's try it out. At the end of Portland, you know, like, I guess the big risk was I did have a lot of good stuff going on, but all of that shit paled in comparison. It paled in comparison to an adventure with uh -huh. somebody I love and trying something. You know what I mean? Yep, so what exactly. if it fucks up? I can always go back. Exactly. Yes, yes. Yep, fuck yeah. it, man. Try it. We're in our thirties. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, yeah man. Because it is like I just, I, I. Well, what this has made me realize was that I don't think I've ever actually liked any relationship I've ever been in, or like actually been in <laughs> love with anybody. Because, dude, like, yeah. like it's just like, I only thought these feelings came from drugs. Like, honestly, it's fucking yeah. crazy, dude. I felt like I felt like literally high on drugs and drunk as shit for like the past month and a half. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, I've been stoned, but that doesn't count. Right. Like real drugs <laughs> I'm talking about. Yeah, the totally. real drugs. Like weed and alcohol don't count. <laughs> no. Well, that's yeah. that's incredible to hear. I want, I want to talk more about that because you um, you mentioning that and then us like I've been having, I've been meditating a lot about, you know, when I was talking about relationships and a lot of them, a lot of the problem relationships I had were due to drugs, mm -hmm. honestly, in the past and shit, you know, but maybe that's what I was searching for. Now that I basically have something like that, I don't need that. Yes. This is an epiphany that I had during this entire thing, because I always thought that the relationships were shitty because of drugs. But then I always, I, then it dawned on me that the only reason I was turning to drugs were because the relationships were so shitty. Like I, I had no joy in the relationships. So I needed yeah. something to bring me like that high. Cause it's like, yeah, like I, I don't know. I like, it's just weird, man. Cause it is. It's it's like, it's, I mean, drugs is, yeah. I always talk about, uh, you know, certain like drugs. I, my, are, my drugs are ex-girlfriends of mine. Like you know? Vicodins, oxys, opiates. Yeah. I was, I was bad on opiates for years. And yeah. Uh, yeah, dude, like it's, that was, and then it's when I finally actually kicked them, it took, yeah, it took a while to do that. Yeah. But yeah, man. No, like, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't did. wish withdrawing on anybody in the fucking world. Like that's no. the worst, worst feeling in the you world. just, you yeah. just feel fucking sick and you can't then the depression and everything like yeah. just, and I've worked through the entire thing somehow kept my job, like kept going. That's, like, Oh wow. That's just awesome. ridiculous. Yeah. Just ridiculous. That's brilliant. Yeah. Cause like, and there's a lot of factors I meditate on all the time, especially with that. I think most of the time, you know, granted there was a couple where the relationship was just shitty. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we didn't belong together and I was filling something that no one else could help with anyway, you yeah. know, but mainly it was like, um, dealing with mental health, uh, through those means, like refusing 
medication and yeah. yet choosing medication albeit a legal medication god yeah. I, I, I totally understand like no fuck you i'm not gonna take any antidepressants or anything exactly. give me these fucking xanax or vicodin like i'll be good yes, yeah i get that and so oh, uh, it wasn't until like uh 26 or 27 where i actually sought help and i got stuff good I stumbled you. here and there but like um i've been off meds now for like over a year Dude, and it awesome. has been, it's been interesting. There are times when I consider like, oh, maybe I should go, yeah, you know, kind of redo it. But I was definitely overprescribed. Was just the healthcare system. I was like, I don't care. Like unless I'm bleeding to death, I don't care about anything you have to say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Well, it is. It's crazy. Oh, uh, well, it, it, that that whole industry is so corrupt just with the kickbacks that the doctors get for prescribing certain medicines. It's just like, oh, they'll yeah. give you anything here, take this, take this along with it. This will help balance that out. And then take this too. Like, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, that's what it was. It was like, it was, you know, those, those were the solutions were the pills. And it's like, that's not the solution. That's a symptom of the solution, but it shouldn't be the fucking solution, you know? And that's what it was, was just, fucking cocktails of fucking shit you know that were totally scrambling my brain in other ways i mean i appreciate it because it like helped me calibrate in a way Mm -hmm. but it wasn't until like getting off of them that i realized that like i i learned how to build the faculties to kind of push forward and not dig the holes that i used to but it's not easy you know oh yeah well, I mean, I've, I've still shit. Yeah. I've probably would really benefit from like a therapy session or actual medicine. I've never done that. Like my therapy has been once a year, I'll just either take acid or mushrooms and kind of just examine my shit. And then that's, yeah. that's basically all I've done. And I'm still alive right now. Pretty healthy minded yeah. as far as I could tell. <laughs> hey, I believe, I believe in the psychedelic so, I mean, experience for mental health. The funny thing though, is I, uh, when I was younger, I had subletted, uh, my first room in portland to a shroom mm-hmm. dealer no and shit. he gave he gave me mushrooms thinking i'd sell them for money and instead i did them like <laughs> nice. four times a week for months oh like, man that's that good yeah. i've seen people lose their shit over that that's not oh good. i got so addicted to coming down i was like wow real life isn't that bad like the trip oh, was so bad i'm wow. so happy to be normal yeah it was scary it was weird it's like yeah. That was a fucking like ridiculous way to like give yourself adversity to overcome something, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But I, in, the, in the long run, I really do feel that it helped because it really did instill in me that like, you know, this sober world, you know, this like somatic shared reality is, is fine. <laughs> It'll yeah. do just fine. Yeah. yeah man that's fucking wild dude that is so much tripping i couldn't imagine that where you are with you know booze and uh weed like you you've been able to kind of just moderate oh fuck no i smoke weed all day and i (laughs) I drink i drink at least uh probably uh, i drink about two beers a night like i don't i don't like have like a bunch of liquor or anything no man yeah and and then there's some nights where i just don't drink at all so i mean it's it's really okay well then there you go yeah weed yeah the booze isn't bad but the weed the weed is yeah i go hard on that like from from awake till i go to bed like i need to smoke pot yeah that's that's the one drug i could never really get into oh you're so lucky i wish i don't know man everyone seems to be having a real fucking good time yeah 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 Um, well it's one of those things where see i i think weed gets a bad rep sometimes because you if it's your first time smoking it and you smoke some really good weed you're gonna be fucking out of your mind so it's like mm -hmm. and then if you get that you're like no 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 why are people doing this every day but to an everyday pothead you don't get that same feeling. Like you're just, you're basically just leveling out. Like I'm just, you know, yeah. just, just, yeah, it's just like, okay, I'm calmed down. My brain's thinking right. Everything's good. But uh, I believe yeah. in it. You know, don't get me wrong. I'd much rather, you know, and you're in a legal friend, state to smoke too? weed every, every minute than, you know, drink five 
whiskeys a night. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, dude. I can't even drink hard liquor. I'm a little bitch. I just should drink yeah. some beer. <laughs> I'm in this weird phase now. You know, speaking with addiction, like getting getting over all of that shit. I found like a lust for life, and it really was with legal shit. It was like getting drunk with friends again. You know, being right. like 27 and like getting shit faced and being like oh thank god you know this <laughs> this is easy to get over you know? yeah but like that's that's kind of what stayed with me i still i still drink um uh not not as much at all as i used to i know everyone says that uh, but i honestly well, that's good. like i mean i don't i I'm like i think it's for different reasons now i'm drinking for different reasons now right it's not because you need feeling it. a void it's celebratory yeah it's like relaxing i sound like a total addict right now dude it's cool you're you're surrounded <laughs> i'm i understand addiction don't worry yeah yeah but i yeah but I'm, i i always i'm always interested in this because uh you like me uh you know got over the hard shit but didn't mm -hmm. cold turkey over everything oh, necessarily. no no yeah no because no, i there's i've a part always of me that uh, thinks i no, i just think that you can't you, sobriety nobody in this world should be completely sober we're not meant to be sober right. and that's just insane that's absolutely insane you need to have be able to change your brain chemistry a little bit and look at all your issues with a different perspective you can't be yeah. sober i just don't trust you i'm sorry you know what's <laughs> funny too is uh i actually talked to jason louv about this years ago uh because i was kind of go I was, i'm trying to rectify my past a lot and mm -hmm. thinking about like why did i do that to myself why was i and then i thought maybe it was because you know it's like an escapist attitude and like you know you listen to alistair crowley who's a fucking like just shit house oh shit yeah heel <laughs> when it came <laughs> to like everything you know and i was asking jason lou what do you think about drugs when it comes to magical practice and he flat out he was he said you know you burn out you burn out too quick it's it's not it won't last you know and that was that stayed with me because there's a part when it comes to you know the metaphysical practice and shit that you're trying mm -hmm. to reach different states of consciousness or you know right. trigger subconscious stuff and drugs seem to be the highway to get there but it's oh yeah you're gonna burn out you know you're gonna fade. Yeah, you can't smoke you can't smoke dmt every night just to right. fucking get there like that's no matter what happen. joe rogan says yes exactly <laughs> oh yeah Bro Joe. Oh, and well i well that's kind of i like I've, I've always been sort of shitty at meditation but you know i feel like right. uh that's that's the natural way of getting there without drugs i mean it is yeah that has been everyone says that you know, you'll hear mm -hmm. time and time again how do i get into this start meditating yeah yep. and that's it's so the fucking number one true. thing it's universal yeah, yeah. It yeah. i still so don't think much. i know, actually know how to meditate because i don't know how to quiet my brain but i'll sit there and pretend i'm meditating for like 15 20 minutes like pretend right. it's happening that's good <laughs> like, enough yeah <laughs> like i yeah, feel like I, uh, maybe my brain might shut off but no it's not happening i should send you this uh this guided meditation from a friend of mine who does like this tree of life meditation where you're mm -hmm. walking through the different circles of the Sephiroth or whatever. And uh, it's just, it allows so much imagination in it that it's, I find it's like good for writing. Right. You know, it's like Man. good for if I, if I'm in a pickle trying to write something, you go <laughs> to that guided meditation, you come out going, you know something crazier than you'd ever think but it works perfectly awesome. oh yeah yeah and i to me that's like the most pragmatic part about all of it to me was documenting or um being journalistic about all of these experiences with like art and shit or podcasting yeah. you know oh, exactly well, that was one of the things that uh where i just see over and over again it's like keep a journal keep a journal keep yeah. a magical journal exactly. everything you do yeah. write it down write it down and that's that's one thing that's stressed majorly so oh man the, and i'm my horrible at writing things now. down yeah. wait what happened <laughs> my memory's for shit now it's it's for shit yeah. Yeah. i have uh if it wasn't for journaling like yeah it would be like i never existed 
at points. <laughs> you know? Man, yeah, I need I to take know, more notes. Just, the process of writing something down is like it's probably another psycho psychological trick, another like idi idiometer effect or something of going through the hand motion, and so it like imprints in your mind. Well, it's it's alchemy, you know. You know, you, you right. have you you're creating this thought in your mind out of nothing, and then you're created into the put it into the physical reality. Like you're yeah, it's, exactly. There's magic there. Everything. I mean, just like brass tacks, though. It's like. Yeah. You know, if you want to learn something, you write it down, right? Because it's like mm -hmm. imprinting it in your brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. take I need notes, to do it more notes. with, after, you know, hey, or talking with Nish and, uh, you know, Jerry and like the whole Nox Mente stuff, I kind of uh, didn't really consider Dream so much, you know, yeah. until I started talking, you know, with them about that deeply. But that's something I need to get into. I could really use like just a dream journal as much as I hate to use that term. Yeah. Well, no, I get it, man. <laughs> my my biggest thing is I don't write. Yeah. I remember a shred of my dreams. It's because all the weed. I mean, it's just I, I go ah. to sleep and then my eyes open up and I guarantee that's what it is. Because dreams. Does it affect your memory poorly? Um... I like I want to say no but I 100% know it does okay. <laughs> like yeah there's there's shit that I'll just uh, there's shit that I'm forgetting that I don't even know I forget so we'll just put it like that like uh, there's things that I know I've probably forgotten <laughs> that I don't know even happened that I've forgotten yeah but, no, I get that but yeah I mean it's it's uh it's it's the way I've come to live my life though and have I'm happy you found your like speaking about Alchem alchemical like concoctions or creations have you found your chemistry yet like what you need to get through a day for happiness what you need mm. to eat what you need to drink i think so down there i mean yeah. i gotta I've, I've i have a pretty pretty regular routine and i'm i'm basically you do i'm very happy yeah yeah that's i mean awesome. like i need coffee in the morning and that's right that's pretty much it though like just as long as I get my coffee in the morning, I'm good with that. And I obviously need, yeah. And you know, some dabs in the morning too. Like right, I just, right. you know, just little things. I'm, I'm always interested in that because I feel like your entire life, you're trying to find that concoction to work and then you just rest on it. Right. And I still like, I, I feel like I still haven't found that. Of course there's coffee in the morning. There's, if yeah. I eat before noon, I'm fucked, you know? <laughs> right. Right. So, oh, exactly. You know, man. These, I can't eat till the afternoon things. either. Yeah. yeah, I cannot do that. No, that's crazy. I don't understand people that eat breakfast. It doesn't make sense. I love breakfast foods, but who eats exactly. that? Early? That's nuts. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I wonder too, with this happiness that you have, uh, have you thought about like what, what the ingredients are daily? I think I've just, I think, um, honestly, I've just somehow I've built a world for myself with cruising with steak where I'm mm -hmm. surrounded by people that are just caring and supportive and it's an amazing fucking community so and community, it's, yeah it's a big one. yeah it really it is because like no matter how shitty my day is i could go into the discord chat rant about it and somebody will be there to just like yeah. just say something or here you know or i could even just like text james or text fucking anybody like it's it's a really it's a really great network we built over there like it, it yeah. kind of blows my mind and what's crazy is it's it's a, like the grim steak persona or whatever it's like it's <laughs> it's it's the most genuine version of myself like you know i have my work personality <clears throat> you know you have your you have your public persona when you're out doing things but like yeah. the who i am on that podcast is genuine me no filters like 100 percent me so it's that's the most comfortable thing like it's it's just it's awesome being able like to just be yourself and have people I love that too. like you for being yourself. You're not being something fake. It's it's awesome. Right. But it's it's even better too because you're you're broadcasted to mm -hmm. everywhere as yourself. Yeah. It's not like And then some amazing girl yeah. in Philadelphia hears it and falls right. in love with you. It's nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When like the adverse is, you know, people put on these masks, you know, just to to get through the day or whatever. Or I mean yeah. to uh to to do creative things. You know, they put on these yeah. masks to like 
uh, on social media or whatever. Right, right. Yep, so exactly. The most of the world can see what mm-hmm. they want, but the fact that you find that freedom in the adverse is like perfect. Yeah, man. Just be myself because that's the only way I'd be yeah. able to talk or on a podcast for two hours a night is if I could just be 100% <laughs> myself. If I had to keep yeah. up some kind of gimmick or bit, that'd be ridiculous. <laughs> God, and like it's so apparent <clears throat> when you hear people with those gimmicks mm-hmm. or bits. Oh, you could tell the fake people or the, yeah. the people that are just putting on the show. Like like Micah Hanks. I love Micah Hanks to death. Great researcher, great author. Like he's he's a great guy. But you could Micah tell Hanks. his radio personality. Radio yeah, he's uh he, he used to do the Grailing Report. I think it's uh he's just just a UFO alien guy. He's oh, okay, guy, sure. But uh but yeah, man, like you could just and when you but when you talk to him, like I've talked to him on the phone before, and when you talk to him he's he's not that personality like he's more real mm. but it's like you put he, you get you get he gets that radio mode he gets going and it's like yeah you put on a good show but you're not genuine you know you're not you're not just like cutting loose and i don't know yeah i, I love oh, no, i it, love podcasts yeah. where people are just genuine just be yourself don't put on that yeah. personality there's a gentle medium too like some of the guests i've had where you can tell after you know researching or reading their books or anything like that you can tell that they've got the fucking plot points like cocked and ready to go and so they're probably themselves but they're safe themselves yep you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and like that can be frustrating especially somebody that's wanting to ask honest questions that has read the work i know that quote i don't need that quote (laughs) i want to know more about that quote yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it's it's a tricky it's a tricky slope. I find myself in this weird contradictory state where I can't do sometimes I can do social media or like sometimes I can um be fine and fun and dumb like just kind of on the computer, right? Mm-hmm. And then other times I'm like I don't want to see a computer ever again. And so oh, I have these weird states where I need to get back into nature, you know, or, oh shit, I guess I should, you know, promote this thing or, and it's just, it's really frustrating to me because I can't find a rhythm, you know? Yeah. You got to get that rhythm, man. You got to, you know, you just, just, just find, go for some good walks, you know, find a good time. Okay. Here's, here's one thing that I've done and I've been, I, this has been happening since I first joined the Grimerica chat room in 2017. I wake up every morning. And, you know, my alarm goes off on my phone. So I grab my phone and I go into the chat room and I just say good morning in capital letters. Just, oh, nice. just, and that's all I yeah. do every, every single morning. And it's almost like a weird little dumb ritual that I've had, but I've done it every single day. And, yeah. you know, and other people, they'll pop in and say it back or whatever. And it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's little, little shit just to, just, just to start the day like that. Like, and then that's yeah. just like, okay, I'm going to get my shit going now. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm learning it. Like I'm kind of new to the whole chat room, you know, situation. Oh yeah. And it's it's one of those where I'm kind of selfish with it. Like I'll chime in when I remember or think about it. Uh-huh. But I need the like I need to be reciprocate or reciprocal, reciprocal. I need to be <laughs> uh I need to give back in it. I need to like uh interact. Interact. Yeah, as interact, much yeah as you know well do you get a lot of do you get a lot else. of emails uh for the show like do do you get a lot of interaction yeah. with the show yeah and i do i'm pretty, I'm very pretty pers- good at personal yeah yeah, yeah i'm good, good with the personal stuff um well that right there's awesome because dude yeah, when I, I mean, before i had a podcast that was one of my favorite fucking things is reaching out to a podcaster and them yeah, like actually it. getting back to me like it's yeah. it's like even though like it's podcasting and who cares but it's dude having that interaction <laughs> with the host it's awesome no, I love it. And like, you know, I'm, I can't help but be humble because I don't know anything. <laughs> so. Dude, I don't either. This is, and I don't think anybody does. There's no art form to this I shit. Know. That's it's just like, you do it your way. People, people that enjoy it will get attracted to you and they'll come to it. Right. And you know, it's like, dude, I've been, we've been, it's, it's two and a half years we've been doing Cruise with steak and we've gotten That's zero incredible. trolls zero trolls I was like 100, 150 ask episodes. You. yeah no we don't get trolled all we get our ironic hate mail and that's about it all like right. we don't uh like i think our discord maybe has three bands in it and it's mm-hmm. been up for 
characters and it's just and most of them are bots like it's just oh no nice. it's no dude we don't got, we don't get trolls we put good vibes out and just hope yeah. that the right people find I, it I, what were you saying before i was before i left there what do i got planned for what you had something going on oh just like the rest of the year for you know the end of the decade oh shit uh just uh work i mean really just just i have i have nothing nothing coming up i mean what do we got can Two i weeks ask left? uh what 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 do you do you don't have to tell me specifically but what what is it that you're doing i work uh, i work uh i work at a grocery store as a meat department manager and okay. uh i, I am i'm a butcher i i cut a lot of meat so i'm sorry all you vegetarians and vegans i'm part of uh you know big uh big big fucking farm meat. Yeah. <laughs> big big agriculture just bullshit I love it. that's a trade man that's that's a trade I, it is. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it is. A trend. I've been speaking of like intentions for next year. It's like I really got to hone down my myriad of skills and probably learn something that people need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. but what are, what are people gonna need? I mean, who knows? Things can change. Everything changes. Yeah. yeah. You know what I was really thinking of? Uh, a crematorium, because everybody dies. That. Everybody dies. It's very true. Always, yeah. you are always going to have business. Always in for business. That. <laughs> and then what you do, I heard. I also heard this pretty sweet uh, thing that this uh, crematorium in California did, where they put like power turbines in their furnaces in the stacks. So as they're burning bo- bodies, they're getting uh, energy generating from that. So it's like free free electric they're getting. What the fuck? That's a brilliant idea. It's all, exactly it's almost as good as like the uh, the biodegradable that goes into trees or whatever they. Yeah. Well, use, dude, there's so much shit the you can do. Yeah. There's so much shit you can do to just yeah. That that's like my ultimate isn't, dream. Just have isn't like isn't crematorium uh, though? Isn't that like really bad for the environment or whatever? Isn't, yeah, isn't I the mean burning? Well, no, you're just I mean, burning not if bodies. They're generating electricity. Yeah. I well, know. I mean, yeah, but are you burning any kind of toxic chemical with the body? Because I think you could just burn bodies all day, and it should be fine for the atmosphere. That's like, true. I don't think it, yeah. I don't think it I'm like it too bad. I'm one of those guys. Like just dig a ditch and put my naked ass in there yeah i kind of yeah. want a viking funeral though <laughs> a viking funeral would be sweet put me on a boat and push me into a lake on fire it'd be awesome i love it like <laughs> we gave uh one of my ex-girlfriend's lizards died and we gave it a viking funeral mm. and uh That's shot perfect. arrows flaming arrows at it <laughs> that kind of oh yeah, yeah. oh it was that's epic. great man um, so what do you think about yeah. death keats you want to talk about death uh, do I want to talk about death? If you don't want to, that's fine. It's, no, of it's, course. It's I a... always want to, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think, like, because I've been thinking about this a lot. I mean, it's pretty prescient because, you know, not not to, like, co-opt Jerry's experience or anything, but just something that, like, left field and fleeting, you know? Mm-hmm. And that should happen. Three per three percent chance. He had a three percent chance of survival, and he fucking That's made insane, it. Insane, man. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, insane. I often joke that I'll probably live forever because <laughs> it's like the opposite of what I want to have happen. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Get that. Uh, but yeah, I, ta- I It's funny because I talked to Jerry and Nish about this, and he's talking about how, like, you know inherently it's like whether you agree with this or not scientifically it is an evolution right it's an evolution Mm of your consciousness of what you are who you are uh Mm -hmm. do i think that this identity like exists outside of this realm you know does this consciousness keep going not necessarily i think like that's the beauty of this shared somatic reality is that these identities are temporary and this is all we got you know right but i do yeah. believe a piece of us or whatever mm-hmm. whatever you, we you can even get into like the carl sagan you know type <laughs> stardust yes we're, we're all stardust man exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. same I mean, atoms or whatever yeah we're yeah. all the same shit just swirling around but i think about this a lot uh, too i uh, obviously uh i think about this a lot uh, funny enough there was a friend who i hadn't seen in like 10 years and she the first question she asked me she goes are you still obsessed with death oh that's great <laughs> <laughs> it's like no 
Yes. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> well, That's good like, to be I mean, known for that. That's it's, awesome. It's, <laughs> it's the well, it's the great equalizer, right? There's nothing more fascinating. Oh, it's, it's, it's the, yes, exactly. Exactly. It happens to every single person. Every single person. And no one knows what the fuck No, happens. it's the biggest yeah. mystery. It's fucking awesome. I love it. Yeah. We were talking about when we were doing our uh, art collective, We the Hallowed, we were like, it was part tongue in cheek, but came up with kind of like religious texts for it, you know? And we had something called the three constants. And the first one was no one knows what the fuck happens when you die. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's true. It's like, yeah. a, a universal but it happens truth, to man. everybody. Yes. It happens to yeah. everyone, but nobody knows. It's fascinating though. Cause I think there's something to be said about uh, people's experiences with it. I mean, Jerry, you know, just listening to that and like, how beautiful that was and mm-hmm. uh and intense but you know you hear the whole gamut of like different experiences yep. different people uh, here in the rings things. of saturn and shit just crazy exactly stuff. yeah 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 and uh you know i i trust i trust people's experiences more than i trust them i think you know what i mean when it comes to yep. them talking about like what happens and i really do feel like people have these and like you can even talk about you know the dmt or whatever that's released when you die you know there's a whole you can science your way out of it in a way but to me that feels like eternity like your last thought would be forever wouldn't it oh man (laughs) so imagine like you your in the way in which you die if you're if you're in fear or if you feel good like that'll kind of oh. determine well that's kind of what they say the about some ghosts right? and shit like screen memories and shit that get implanted right, right. or like imprinted on the environment like yeah i love that okay. I, I i dig that because i like the idea of reverberation like i like the idea yeah. of we exist in these wooden walls that all used to be living things mm-hmm. you know and oh, we all, all vibrate. The, There's just vibrations yeah. everywhere that's going on. I mean, I mean, we can't see it, but it's happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. Well, I mean, like just the dynamics that happen within these wooden structures we yeah. call homes, like they're going to absorb shit, uh-huh. you know, and sometimes maybe it bounces back, you know, I, I like I've had, that's, I've had that's... paranormal experiences, but you know, to be quite honest, I think I've gotten more discerning about my imagination Right. And I think that's part of the fun. I think that's maybe that's like a weird way to keep us or keep me from actually knowing anything. It's like the older you get, the more you, you know, distrust your, your memory. Oh yeah. Yep. Whatever. It's, it's a weird built in program. <laughs> to like not maybe allow you to, to know. well that but that also probably has to do with like the mandela effect and all that shit going on now just sure. people not be not remembering stuff just it's a the mass mis- m- mass yeah mass misremembering yeah uh-huh. i love that mass <laughs> i like that word yeah that's <laughs> good i you know i i looked into that quite a bit um but to me though that has existed before like the whole mandela phenomenon i remember right. kids you know me and my girlfriend were joking the other day because she thought the Slim Jim uh, uh, motto or whatever was different than it actually is. But she snap was into a Slim serious. Gym? Yeah, not snap. She was saying step into a Slim Jim. Oh. <laughs> well, that's, that's like, Mandela she effect. Step? She yeah. should have made a YouTube. She should have made a YouTube video. And she should have. She, she would have got two yeah. million views, and all these people would have remembered step. <laughs> God. I love her. She's so stubborn about it. It's hilarious. <laughs> Why would you step into a Slim Jim? Uh, yeah, why would you? It doesn't make but, sense. But, you know, like, <laughs> growing up, like, uh, so I'm saying I like a lot because of drinking. Um, we, I misremember things. Misremembering. Mm-hmm. I, I totally understand things. that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, with, with groups of people and shared experiences all the time. Mm-hmm. Especially from when I was younger. Um, I had a paranormal experience that I ex- like actually experienced with two other friends in Portland uh, late one night, but it kind of this like folktale of it kind of grew into this thing that I'm not entirely sure was is actually 
Oh, okay. So just people you know like I mean? talking about the story or the story being told yeah, so yeah. many times got changed yeah. over time and stuff. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, that's why I love uh, the whole Alan Moore idea of, you know, every your imagination is a different plane of existence, basically. And it's, you know, you totally. have all of this stuff existing, all these thoughts going different realities in a way. So all the stories or, you know, characters you create actually live in these weird hyper worlds and stuff you know and i think yeah. that's more in line than rather just the kind of ho-hum ghost experience right. well who's to say that we aren't just some that. sort of character created by somebody in a hyper world right now that's just being imagined i mean we absolutely. don't know absolutely <laughs> yeah it's fucking nuts no you're absolutely right yeah and i think there's something to be said more about that i forget what the um phenomenon's called it's not like it's not unified field but it's it's something where all of the preternatural stuff like i was talking about earlier how oh you're in the aliens and sasquatch and ghosts you know? <laughs> yep, yep. but those actually at like exist in a unified field mm -hmm. together oh dude i yeah i told it's all it's all the same it's all the same yeah. phenomenon it's just the other it's just the 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 weird yeah. the different just the shit that manifests beyond the veil that we can only get slips through every now and then, like something breaks down and we can get a visualization of it or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think too, to circle back to the drugs talk about that, like escapist idea. Mm -hmm. I think that was more about nullifying it than experiencing it. Oh, uh, okay. Does that make sense? So wait, I'll find it then experience. No, no, explain. I mean, not, not, the, right not the mushrooms, not, not oh, the okay. mushrooms, but like, you know, opiates or. Oh, yeah. They were. It was more about not being privy to those ideas or those oh, okay. experiences. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. You know, numbing. No, I hate to use the term oh, numbing because it's. It, it's a total numbing, though. It, I mean, yeah. that's what it is. You're just, you're just getting high. Well, dude, the thing that, that, God, the worst thing about. It, just waking up in the morning, first thing in the morning, and the first thought in your head is like, "How am I going to get drugs? How am I? What, what so, am I going to do right now?" Like that's yeah. that that happened so many times. Like I'm so glad that that is not the first thing in my head anymore these days. Like it's insane. Well, and but you hope it's something else with that. Like the clarity yeah. of purpose is what I got addicted to. Yeah, there I you go. love that clarity of purpose. Like mm -hmm. this is my one focus is to, you know, feel better. Yeah. In this way, like everything else can burn. I don't care. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so trying to transpose that into more, I don't know, interpersonal relationships and like love and quote unquote success or whatever, you yeah. know, that's like, I think that's what I was addicted to most was just clarity of purpose. Right. And yes. I can't believe that. There was a time in my life where that's all I needed for a second, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, dude, that's all we really time, want in life. We just, we just yeah. want purpose in life. Like we want to yeah. figure out why the fuck are we here? What are we doing? What's going on? Like, what's the yeah. reason for all this? What happens when we die? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we've, that's, that's probably, that's an interesting question, but that's something that I'm sort of just excited about. Like death is the last, like, right. that's the furthest fear from me that, which makes me just more confident to take any kind of chance. Like what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Like I'll, I'm going to die. Like, I mean, really my, it's my high school friend. Uh, she, she told me this, we were talking about it when I was like 13, but she said, I'm not afraid of death. I'm afraid of the pain of dying. And that's uh, with me. I think I think uh, that's why people are afraid of it. They don't want to go through the pain, like the yeah. God forbid it's a long drawn out whatever it is. Right. You know. Well, but I to mean, me, that's you, like that's where most that. of the fear comes from. Yeah, I mean, yeah. physical. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, most people have probably already experienced pain far greater than that in different yeah. ways. Like, oh, absolutely. Just, but you yeah. know, to everyone, the idea of not surviving means that yeah. it has to be the worst pain yeah like, well when it couldn't at all you could have right? like your your brain stem exactly. like severed or something and have no exactly. pain at all people don't just, know yeah just be gone or just die in your sleep 
Like that's it, it yeah. can happen at any time. Like it just come. It's like it's, it's, it's a fear of possibility. It's like a fear of exit. How I'm mm-hmm. how am I exiting? Am I yeah. taking the elevator or am I fucking throwing myself down the flight of stairs? <laughs> you know, right. Kind of yep. Thing. Exactly. Well, it's more of a reason why you should yeah. just appreciate every moment you have because it could happen at any time. Like all this shit could just be done any second. Just be done. You'd be driving to work I in the morning. And bam. Agree. Yeah. Just swoop. Just, just like, a, like, don't, don't get frustrated about bullshit. Just, just, yeah. Ah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's taken a long time for me to finally just get to this point where I'm pretty much unfazed by a lot of shit. Like, I, just, I love that, man. That's just awesome. Just rolls off my shoulder. Just, yeah, you know, good. I, just, yeah. Life's too short. I enjoy it. I have, you know, for the first time. I think in a long time, I don't fear so much about the creative stuff or like worry mm-hmm. about doing it. It's the other stuff. It's like the shit that, that matters. <laughs> it's yep. like, yep. you know, the the career and the making sure the relationship is good and like right. everyone's healthy and there's no, you know what I mean? So that's been, that's been a big change in my mode and i f- i like it. i love it i love that feeling that's awesome honestly how old are you, you know what I mean? 33 30 okay right on yeah, yeah. So you're, okay yeah, i'm 34 yeah man it's crazy yeah. you know we just we uh took long enough right their time yeah well dude we had to go through our saturn bullshit i mean that's, that's when everything true. hit me everything hit me yeah. from like 28 to 31 like i just my world was fucked just oh, like, yeah? quit jobs switched them around i got out of a relationship after so many years, yeah. like everything, like that's when everything just started clicking in my head. Like when I got like into conspiracies and just everything, like 28 years old, my life just started getting fucked. And that's so oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, no, it's okay. You go ahead. I was just going to ask, like uh, you, you reminded me of a question when you're talking about when you're at your low and you're starting to get into conspiracies, do you think mm-hmm. that, has something to do with like paranoia or is it something you want like control you want an idea that you have control over um information or you know what i mean like that's interesting where does that, where that, does that, that might from? be something i've never thought of that i mean i've always yeah. been like a weirdo like i loved x files growing up i loved like oh, just yeah. any kind of like ufo or nessie documentary that i saw on like sci-fi channel or whatever was on i loved ancient aliens when it first came out so it's okay. like it's always been one of those I've been into it, but uh, I, I I got like really hooked on Adderall for a few years. And mm-hmm. there, when you're eating fucking a shitload of Adderall and just late in the night, just like chain oh, yeah. smoking cigarettes, going down YouTube holes, like, dude, my brain was exploding. And oh, then, yeah. Yeah. and then, yeah, like, honestly, like I probably just got off my, off all pills altogether. Like I got off the Adderall probably about two or three months before i joined the grimerica chat room like i finally Whoa. just kicked i kicked everything so it's like i i've just been pretty much no no just on weed and booze since uh since yeah to 27 the very beginning of 2017 well so yeah it's like you don't like need it because you found the community oh no, man i found, found i found community, community. Yeah. i found people that fucking like my bullshit for some reason <laughs> right take it <laughs> like it's, it's also it's yeah great. just like thinking about the conspiratorial things or why people are so interested i i often think about that it has a lot to do with um wanting to be a part of something mm-hmm. you know like it's oh yeah you feel yeah. like you're left out you're an outsider and everything's against yeah. you well yeah and then when you Fine, start seeing yeah. this shit you're like oh they've been lying to me this yeah. entire time and totally. then you feel like you know something that other people don't know and it gives you mm-hmm. like this this ego like it's 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 crazy when people like you have to really put yourself in check like i've been down a fucking wild road with this shit it's just yeah. uh yeah it's just i mean that well that's yeah, pretty leveled I mean, out it's... like yeah. i you know talking to ryan peverly a bit like towards yeah, the end of great. his culture he you know, he's just talking about like he's he's not into it anymore. He doesn't. Yeah. He kind of moved through the occult thing. You know, he was never really a practitioner, but he was something so somebody what? so bloody interested and in all this stuff. And then he kind of he chose to bow out because he was like, yeah. What's interesting about Ryan? It. Same same path. He was in a long term relationship. You know, got out of it and then just started diving deep into what the fuck's going on. 
Like it's, yeah. it's dude, there's so many people I've run across this community that about 31, 32 years old, they get out of some long-term shit because they fuck their 20s up with some relationship they didn't want to be in. And then I find them in like the Grimerica chat room or in our chat room or just like trying to find truth. Like it's, it's insane. Like so yeah. many people like that. So it's like, dude, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. There's like a slow want- waking up of people out there. <laughs> and yeah. it's interesting that it makes me believe in just the whole Saturn return shit. Like when Saturn comes back, you just get kicked in the fucking face and just don't know how to deal with it. Like it just throws all your bullshit back at you and you have to figure things out. How, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I know some astrology or whatever, but I, I was under the assumption it was like year 26 or 27, right? That's like, I really, is it 27? Saturn return happen? I think so. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that was well, like, I, did, the big I always thing just assume with, like you know, anything all late 27 I kind of lump it in. Yeah. I lump it in with anything like around like late 20s, early 30s. It's just kind of that. I mean, yeah. You, you, no, have, I mean, you have that yeah. whole year of trying to process it and like trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Like it shakes you up. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it's weird how I've seen a lot of people around the same age, like between 31, like late 20s, early 30s. Who just pop around and are coming out of long-term relationships or their life's just yeah, upside down we're all just still kids man we're just trying Fuck to yeah man we don't know shit, shit. <laughs> we don't know shit i know nothing i'm probably gonna die in philadelphia who cares the government failed us <laughs> yeah exactly we got all the information we needed or fingertips no. and it's just too no. much <laughs> oh that's amazing though isn't it anything you yeah. could ever want to know is just right there like just just google it it's it's scary well, you what's know, funny is like you know I'm a big film guy and especially like early uh you know neo-futuristic films the one mm-hmm. thing like there's no flying cars there's no fucking robots and the blah blah, blah. Yeah, what's the that? one thing they never thought about was having a fucking supercomputer in your pocket which trumps all of that other shit yes it does yep you know? yep Who absolutely needs a fucking robot <laughs> Oh, yeah and, and, and i don't think even like we don't i like i know personally i don't appreciate the power of the technology that i have in my pocket like i use it for like twitter and email and texting right, right. like i don't like i could be doing amazing stuff with this thing this processing power in this but it's just crazy well i mean you are like you, you you're tuning into a community and it seems like you've got a great like relationship with it and it's like really beneficial you know yeah internet's been good to me yeah, internet has been awesome. good so i mean yeah awesome. i really uh technology is amazing but it's also <laughs> horrible it's the best right. and the worst thing in the world like i don't it's a love-hate relationship this is the contradiction i live in yeah yeah absolutely. exactly <laughs> where i'm like i gotta i gotta get back to the earth fucking go live in a teepee uh-huh. in the middle of the fucking desert and then i'm like yeah. wait what's happening on twitter Exa- yeah or come on yeah i <laughs> could, could, couldn't do that i mean it'd be good for a weekend but come on man <laughs> you know yeah. just go camping figure it out where am i gonna uh, shit post yeah exactly you, you gotta find your memes you need to find the memes yeah. <laughs> uh memeology although i really want to do some backpacking in japan that's another 2020 goal. Maybe, yeah, I think I could maybe pull that off in 2020. Maybe 2021. Maybe we'll do. Maybe yeah, we'll set, we'll we'll do this again next year, Keats, and I'm gonna set yeah, intention. Absolutely. Because, dude, back so, like that's I want to go to Japan. I'm a fucking weeb. I'm just a huge weeb. Like we, I've slowly was, turned cruising with steak into an anime podcast too. We I know. I, I realized. <laughs> uh, was the was the anime anime recent for you? No, so I've like, always been a huge fan always, of anime. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, but but no. Here's the thing, though. I I was huge fan like in my in my late teens, and then once I discovered like Girls and Pussy, I was like, oh, I can't watch anime anymore. So I kind of just like <laughs> fell off it, and I became that. And then like when I came back to the like after like you know I got out of a relationship and everything, I was like, I fucking love anime. I'm like, I'm going back to it. With so I just, arms I just, wide open. Oh, exactly, dude. Creed just started playing. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful day. And then, uh, yeah, so I just embraced it. And uh, I've just, I, I binge watch a shitload of anime. And uh, I just, I just love the Japanese. I'm just a full blown weeb. Like, I can't, I'm, no, I, I I'm not ashamed it. of it. I throw it out there. This is my life. You know, I'm, I'm going to so, throw yeah, my so, full nerdiness out. 
Philadelphia and Japan, 2020 yeah. or yeah. 2020, 2021. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Do you There's have any um, bigger, not bigger, like this isn't big enough, but do you have any things you want to do with the podcast or what are you doing? I just want, I just want to keep, uh, just keep staying, going live every Tuesday night. And, uh, you know, if people find us, that. they find us and they'll join in, like just, just hanging out with my friends. That's pretty much all it is. So we'll, that's one thing that is a guarantee, no matter what. Cruise mistake will be live every Tuesday night. We'll be there. That's awesome. And if we aren't, it's because I died. 100%. <laughs> like, <laughs> I guarantee it. Like, I, I, I guarantee it. I will be there and have that show live. Rain or shine. So, I mean, that's, that's well, pretty, much, pretty much it, man. Well, Graham, We're, like, it has been a pleasure, as always. This has been I, awesome. Uh, I really, really appreciate, you know, Cruise and Mistake. But I really appreciate you being, like, upfront about you know, the new love in your life and, and all the oh, good dude, stuff. I, mean, I think I've, I've lived, uh, the, this podcast, this, everything I'm completely, I've lived my life and just put everything out there. So I'm not going to stop that, now. Yeah. Like this is, this is where my life is. This is the people that like me will appreciate it. The people that don't like me won't tell me cause it's, I don't ever hear it. So it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's amazing. That's my life. Yeah. I mean, dude, like thanks, my man. intentions are to, uh, be a better man <laughs> oh you're a great man keith in 2020 great man dude we're sideburn Maybe. bros you kidding me right now yeah that's true yeah yeah Come on. <laughs> this is just but also uh landing a new like daytime gig would be dope yeah that'd be cool yeah. well let's set it you're gonna get that yeah. like like an actual job or like uh like uh like, like better job better with or... relationships uh yeah not maybe not freelancing like actually finding oh something steady some consistent yeah hit that nine to five grimstick style all right yeah, yeah no totally i mean i'm there where i would appreciate it now because i've yeah. got something i want to you know keep happy hell yeah man that's what i'm talking yeah. about that's why yeah. i've decided to make doctor's appointments after like you know 20 years of uh, not going to a doctor's <laughs> like i'm like i should yeah. probably make sure i'm healthy you know <laughs> so shit, i have something i, I care about that. now like I've, I've been, I haven't been to a doctor in a really long time and i have good insurance so i don't know what the fuck i'm doing exactly fuck i think i'm uh, gonna take a jog tomorrow yeah, yeah i might, might even jog who knows <laughs> no let's not get crazy come on no <laughs> it's, yeah it's ridiculous that's nuts, it's too... that's nuts. <laughs> well grim it's been a pleasure man um hell yeah i will keep you updated about when this goes up but i really do appreciate it dude this is so good i needed to this is my first uh talk back from that break and it was it was awesome just uh that's awesome man dude know, i've had yeah. i've had a blast anytime you want to talk just let me know we can just shoot the shit let's do it we don't even have I to record i'll just more. hang out yeah man yeah <laughs> yes. <Sweet. laughs> definitely i gotta tune in on uh what was it tuesdays right tuesdays yeah. yeah and if you don't it's cool we're there every tuesday i mean if I, you got free I, time I, pop I, in. I, I caught him every now and again it's like same with nox mente like so i'll be in a place maybe i can like you know annoy yeah. people in the chat yeah exactly yeah <laughs> i'm the same way with next month i'll pop in for like five minutes give it a thumbs up maybe listen for a little bit yeah. and i'm like ah, i'll catch it later <laughs> if i want to <laughs> and before we I'll wrap write, up like I gotta, an article I, I'll, but I'll, yeah before we wrap up <laughs> i want to give you a podcasting tip from groomsteak it doesn't get me listeners so this isn't even a tip at all but i do zero show notes my description mm-hmm. is hey we talked about some cool shit and that was about it like that's yeah. that's pretty much it you know <laughs> People i love that read. yeah I, if i was at a higher volume i think i i would absolutely be fine doing that oh i'm at an insanely now, low volume it's like i take so much time it's like two a month that no I'm man like, we only get like 200 them. downloads an episode like we're at an insanely oh, yeah. low volume like it's, it's no i mean like volume as far as output oh okay i got like oh, how many episodes, episodes you're doing extra, yeah, okay, yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I don't want. Yeah. Grimsteak at gmail dot com. <laughs> Ironic hate mail. Ironic or real hate mail. I don't care. Oh yeah. I'll take true. it. Just I'll wait. Read it with love. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> oh, thank you, Keats. Good times. Yeah. Cheers. Good times. Cheers. Appreciate it. Once again, I want to thank Grimsteak for just such a wonderfully candid, vexing uh, conversation. 
please listen to Cruising with Steak. Every Tuesday, it's live. You'll find all the information in the show notes. I also want to give another shout out to Jerry Cthulhu. Uh, I can't believe that he had to go through something so traumatic, and I'm really happy that he's okay. And it's awesome. Listen to Nox Mente. I know they're getting back. I'll have that also in the show notes. Uh, you can listen to the full unedited, real sloppy, but absolutely fun uh, conversation on my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash pragmagic. Also, stay on the lookout for We the Hallowed coming back after this short break. Uh, new episodes coming from Prag Magic. I've got Sarath, the motherfucking mage, uh, coming up next. Hopefully I'll have that out before the new year. But also new contributors for We the Hallowed as we pump up the blog, the publishing, uh, the writing, the articles. Since recording this podcast, one of my intentions was to, um, in this new year, was to finish writing my book. And to do that, I knew that I needed to jump into a writing, a freelance writing gig that would cause me to write and get a routine every day uh, drafting. And it's so funny. I ended up landing a gig as a freelance writer for a major uh, entertainment blog uh, that will cause me to write every day, that will get me back in the routine, that will help me fortify We The Hallowed as the occult and art blog. I know it can be. So 2020 is going to be a great year. And I truly believe that. And I'm truly feeling it. I feel back. Feel ready. Bring it on. Anyways, as we say in We The Hallowed, haunt on.